Thank you, Elena. That was an amazing piece of work, and it took the major part of a year of uh, very talented uh, colleagues in the team. And so I hope that they are now free to help us in AI. So I am Alvaro. I'm working uh, on AI for Pembot, and I want to share with you how we see AI in these times of so much hype and sometimes so many disappointments. Right, so design is many things to many people, right? And it's, it's also different things to different programs. Um, Pempot takes a very complex representation, code that you can download and, ex and uh, explore as JSON, and it funnels it into pixels, which is what bystanders may think design is about. But you, designers and developers working with designers, know that there's much more depth to design. The design looks like pixels, but emerges in the mind as emotions and understanding after being processed by the neurobiology of the brain, by the cultural frameworks, sometimes shared, sometimes not, by your personal history, and by the context of the moment. So the question is, what image of design is, are we going to deliver to AI? Because AI is, at the end of the day, nothing else than one more program. It's actually a machine-learned program, a program that we learn from data. So can we see beyond the code representation that we have and the pixels that apparently at the surface represent design? Let's look at what a component is for Pembot. Um, you see this box with the line, harmless as it is. Um, it looks to Pembot, um, if we represent it in this graph form, as a square and a line, which are linked to a container. It's actually a frame by an East child of relationship. So that's what the disks mean. Disks are entities, arrows are relationships. This is a very powerful modeling paradigm, and in fact, in fact, it's already exposing to you that there's something invisible already to you in the canvas about this representation. That's the component object uh, top right. And by the way, this is something we can produce and store in a graph database, so we can invoke uh, summon these representations with incantations such as you see below, which is nothing else than a query on a graph similar to what you know, people do with relational databases when they use SQL. Right, let's do something more complicated. Let's look at a component, green, and a copy of a component in purple. What do we see that is new? Well, um, the frames that contain them are both pointing to the same component object that lives in the same page or in another page. But what's most remarkable is that they are now linked by arrows, the horizontal arrows, which represent refers to. So the line, the diagonal line is linked to the diagonal line. The square is linked to the square, even though the color is overridden. And the frames are also linked between themselves. All right, seems easy enough. Now, let's look at the entire file for this example. Two new objects appear, the file, the document at the top in green, um, and the page. And, well, it looks just a little bit more complicated, except we've added a new type of link. So that's the blue link there. And what it actually represents is something that Tempot does not explicitly record, but your brain computes. Everybody here is actually computing many things understanding many things out of a design like that that are not explicitly written down in the code. And that is our approach. That's what we want to bring to machine learning, to AI programs, the, a similar understanding, similar enough understanding to what you have so that they are, can operate on the document at a semantic level. In this case, what we've uh, calculated here is how much of the green square covers the purple square. And that's now something we can use both in traditional programs and in machine learning programs. Right, if you now look at a realistic design, 
that's a plethora of entities and relationships. And that's where it really gets exciting, right? A lot of data makes us machine learning people very happy. So there is this enriched representation we have uh, shown to you as a graph. And that's something that actually we like enough to say, we'd like to give it to you through the Pempot API. That's what Ted and Pablo said. There's no uh, second class citizen. You will be able to use this when and if we are done. Uh, but also, programs can benefit from it, and notably, LLMs. LLMs are limited in many ways, but we can help them understand the structure of things. And in this particular case, um, we are doing that by presenting to you today the new uh, Pempot MCP server. Uh, and I'm going to um, play to you a video by Dominic. You'll find him, um, if you like, he's sitting there, very nice guy and very talented, the kind you want to work with, um, which shows to you uh, what will be available on GitHub in a few uh, minutes. We present the PenPod MCP server. Using the model context protocol, MCP, it enables a client using a large language model to connect directly to a PenPod design. Let's say we have a design like this in PenPod and want to apply it in a front-end project. As you can see, it contains various styles for buttons as well as input fields. We need only to establish a connection to the MCP server in order to allow the AI to work with the project's contents. Now let's ask Claude to create a login form for us, extracting the styles directly from the PenPod design. It will achieve this by primarily applying a single mechanism, the execution of JavaScript code directly in the PenPod web app. In this example, it will write code to gather information about the structure of the design and to export style information. And here is the finished product, the login form that we asked for, built with HTML and CSS. You'll find it at that URL. You're welcome to play. We wanted to share it with you as soon as possible so you can poke holes on it and also tell, you, tell us how you'd like to use it. I like to stress, <clears throat> and that's something you'll see on the video, which is also uh, up there in, on GitHub, uh, that this is using actually the same PenPod API plugins have access to, which gives it a lot of granular control over PenPod, and in particular allows you to actually do design to design, not just design to code. And that's where we would like to head to. So we'll have this powerful representation. We'll have machine learning programs, which are not LLMs working on it. But we will also have the power of LLMs, in so far as they are helpful, operating on this representation. And we would like to give all of that to you, designers, developers, to make better designs with, with less effort. Thank you. Yeah.